name recognition. From this side, if, if I'm chosen to be the athletic director, we will have instant name recognition. Leadership. Funding, facilities, compliance culture, recruitment, retention, and development, and staffing. But we have the opportunity to recruit. Everybody in this room has an opportunity to recruit a student to come to Mississippi Valley. Leveraging the alumni, rebuilding our brand, leveraging technology, improving collaboration and communication. We have to do a better job. Those are opportunities. Everybody has an opportunity. And we all know what's our threats. Our threats are student athletes to the party. We have the porter. The porter right now, I think, is the worst thing could ever happen. Because now you're giving our students the opportunity to leave just because they're not playing. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, students recruit students. If our students leave, nine to my 10, the regular student body is going to leave. Okay. So we have to do a better job of maintaining our student athletes. Yes. Local economic impact and also institutional merger. They talked about merging when I was in school. But how we solved that problem, we won. We went down to the state legislature, and they talked about merging. We haven't heard of merging since. But we know that still is out there. We know that still come up. So that's why it's very important that everybody in this room, your, respons your responsibility is to help Mississippi Valley stay alive. That's our obligation, to do that. Now, ask this question. <laughs> have always asked this question. Why not me? <laughs> I asked that question. Why not me? First of all, Valley Athletics cannot afford two to five years it would take another AD to come and be a relationship. Serving as athletic director is not a stepping stone for me. I'm not trying to attempt to enhance my resume. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to try to help Mississippi Valley to be better. All right. All right. All right. I'm here for I'm a, I am a MBSU stakeholder, I'm a SWAC stakeholder, and I'm an NC2A stakeholder. I was a successful student athlete here. Mm -hmm. I know how to build and restore programs. Yes. I have invested in Valley, and Valley has invested in me. Yes. I feel I have the I feel I have these, the experience, mm -hmm. the skills, mm -hmm. the connection, and the support to take this program to another level. All right. All right. Yeah. I feel that I'm the right fit for Mississippi Valley. Before I start a asking questions, I got this up for a reason. I want to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> the elephant in the room is, People say that Jerry Rice is not committed to Mississippi Valley. People say that Jerry Rice is not committed to Mississippi Valley. I've been knowing Jerry for over 40 years. Jerry and I, we are connected. We've always been connected. We always will be connected. The point that I'm trying to make is social media is good. Social media can be bad. All right. Jerry and I, we talk all the time. And I hear this, and I heard this, and I, I hear it all the time, but I, I don't respond to it. You know, people say that Jerry has never done anything. Jerry's not going to do anything. But let me just tell you some of the things that Jerry done that you don't know. Just because you don't go out in the public and say what he's doing doesn't mean he's not doing it. That's right. When I was the head football coach here at Mississippi Valley, Jerry gave me the Nike contract. That Nike contract was worth $150,000. But Jerry told me one thing, don't sell like, don't tell anybody that I'm giving you this contract. My God. You know me, I was excited. I wanted to tell people. Yeah. But he told me don't do it. I asked him why. He said, if you, if you tell people that I'm giving, everybody going to ask everybody. me for money. Everybody. That's right. And he said that Boy Scouts asked him for money. Girl Scouts asked him for money. Grandma. People in the church asked him for money. So I understood that. He did that for seven years. Seven years. That means I used that money to offset my budget. When I offset my budget, 
I didn't have to use that money for apparel. I didn't have to use that money for sweatsuits. I had to use that money for gym shoes, cleats, which that we need in football. I remember one year I spent $30,000 just on cleats. $30,000. That reminded me of something else that Jerry did. When I was hosting the golf tournament, Jerry was one of my main contributors to the golf tournament. I did that tournament for two years. We raised over, over $300,000. Just on a golf tournament within six months, we did that. And another thing Jerry did, a lot of you may not know, because he told me not to tell you. <laughs> but when I talked to him Friday, I told him I was going to mention it. Jerry was the first to give a donation on the turf field. But he didn't want nobody to know that. He wanted to be anonymous. Well simply because of some of the reasons and some of the things I told you before. And the last thing, because Ms. Jean Cadden don't mind me saying this, <laughs> but Jerry Rice is on our foundation board. People say that Jerry Rice is not doing anything for Mississippi Valley. Jerry Rice is the top player in the nation, ever played the game at wide receiver. The top. So that means, with that being said, everybody can't go to Jerry. But you know who can? You, you can. Willie Totten. Yeah. 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 Because we've developed a relationship over the years. In order for us to change this program, we got to be a relationship. Mm -hmm. My only point that I'm saying is, Jerry is not the only alum that we have. All right, all right. I remember listening to our national alumni president when he said we got anywhere from between 15 and 20,000 alums. We have 1,500 active alums. We have 28 chapters who are active. Why do we have to depend on one person and we can do it ourselves? Amen. When I graduated from Mississippi Valley, and those who graduated from Valley did the swear, did the oath. And the first thing he said that you will what? Give back to your university. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to give. We're going to have to build those relationships. People give to people that they trust. That's right. That's people right. give to people who they have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. When I was working in the advancement office, the thing that I learned in the advancement office about fundraising, when I used to go to those conferences and they talk at those conferences, the first thing they say is, how much are your alumni giving? When we talk about sponsorship, we talk about going to these big corporations. They're not gonna let you, they're not gonna talk to you. If your alumni is not giving back, they're not gonna give. First thing they're gonna say, if your alumni is not giving, why should we give? That's facts. So I know how to approach those people. I know how to approach them. Working in a basketball was a big thing for me. And I learned a lot. I just felt I had to say that because Jerry's not going to say that. But one thing we do know, we don't need to run a person like Jerry Rice away because you don't know. Social media will do that. Because people read and people are on social media oh, yeah. for good or for bad. That's So with that being said, I'm going to open it up for questions. And I thank you. All right. Mike Magazine, Angela Buckner. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing great. How you doing? Glad to be here. Mike, Mike. Testing, testing. I'm well, you're, you're, loud, you're loud and clear now. <laughs> the voice behind the mic. <laughs> okay, well, Coach Todd, I want to ask you, because this is a question that I did ask the other candidate. What do you plan on doing about the likeness? You know, now students can, you know, bring in more revenue because of their image and, you know, their namesake. How do you plan on helping uh, to generate more funds for them? Um, 
Well, and that's 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 out there. I mean, I think it's a great thing. I think if I would have been, if they had that when I played, I think I would have been a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the way we're going to have to address that, first of all, we got to find out and understand exactly how it works and the impact that it's going to have on the student athlete and the university. I think once we do that, I think we need to uh, work closely with the commissioner mm -hmm. to, to find out specialized training with the NC2A mm -hmm. to understand. Once we understand how it works, I think it's very important for us to get with the, the marketing department on the campus mm -hmm. and the business office to find out what is go programs that would be effect that we can use to monitor that and make sure we have the program in place that we can be afford to pay the student athletes. Okay. Coach Todd. Yes. Some people have said that uh, Ballard needs, uh, I think the term was new breed. You've shared just now about your experience. What overall then do you feel uh, that you can bring uh, to Valley, some of what you've said, and some dealing with the conversation out there about the new breed aspect of Valley. Yeah, hey, I think we always need new breed. I think we need new blood. It's good for the soul, as they say. Uh, but go back to just my experience. I think experience. I think experience. Right now, Valley. Uh, it's very fragile now in our athletic department. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think new is good, but you can hire new within the program to uh, solve some of those issues. But I think it's good. I, it's no doubt in my mind that, that I know that uh, the other candidate is a former player of mine. And I think, I think Akeem is a good person. But I think right now we need we need someone I feel that has a, have, that have the experience of the know-how, the trials and the tribulations, and been there. I just I, I don't have anything with new. But I think new is good. It's always good. But I think right now we need experience. All right, Coach Titan. Yes, I have a question. Uh, being that you have served in the capacity as the head football coach. If and when the decision is made, do you see yourself micromanaging in football or trying to coach indirectly as a, uh, and I know that sounds crazy, but that's what a lot of people are concerned about. Well, let, let me, let me, I appreciate that, that question because I'm a football coach at heart. Mm -hmm. But I think when you get a point in your life, in your career, you have to change your perspective. You have to change the way you think. When I had the opportunity to come back to, to work at Mississippi Valley, I talked to Coach Dance. The first thing I told Coach Dance, you don't never have to worry about me. You don't never have to look over your shoulder for me in football. Because I understand the position, the seat that he's sitting in. I'm here to help. This is my university. I want my university to excel. Mm -hmm. I want my university to be I've been a head football coach. Mm -hmm. So it's not the fact that I want to be another football coach. Mm -hmm. I think I can go and apply for another head coach if I wanted to. <laughs> That's not what I want. <laughs> but, but my mission is to help him. And being the athletic director, that's what I want to do. I want to be in position now where I can help him financially. Being a head football coach sometimes is hard to look to try to raise money, to try to move the needle because you're trying to worry about who beat that opponent. Mm -hmm. But now, now this is where I come in at as an athletic director because now my my mindset is different. My mindset now is to help and put him in a better situation so he can be successful. And this is my last thing. The past administration, um, there have been complaints um, that people have donated and the funds they found out did not go towards, say for instance, Coach Dancy, football. Okay, um, as an athletic director, uh, will you be able to make sure that the proper funding is allocated towards the place that the people are under the impression that it's going? Well, actually working in the advancement office, those, those accounts are already set up. I mean, if you, if you know exactly where to send the money to, 
Coach Danzig shouldn't have a problem. Not only Coach Danzig, any of the coaches shouldn't have a problem why the money is going. And I stated earlier, most times people give to people who they know and That's who right. they trust. That's right. So that means if we have a fund set up for Coach Danzig, that money should go to Coach Danzig mm -hmm. in his account mm -hmm. because the account is already set up in the advancement office. So I think that would be some of the problem he, he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have to worry about if a, if a, a alarm, say I gave you a hundred dollars, I'm just using that as an, as an mm -hmm. example. He shouldn't have to trace that hundred dollars down. He should go to his account and know exactly who gave him that money and the money should be in his account. That's right. I, think, I think this is what I talk about when I'm talking about in terms of my department review. Mm -hmm. These are some things that I would be reviewing to make sure that we have those things in place. So now we can can solve those problems if there's a problem. Thank you. Coach Titan, I would like to just comment on the um, new versus uh, experienced and being a strong supporter of Mississippi Valley State University. I have seen new come in help Valley for a short period of time, All right, now. gain name recognition, mm -hmm. and move on to the pastures. I have not only seen it in the athletic program, but I have seen it in the academic program. There have been professors who couldn't get a job at, an, at a university. If he had a terminal degree, Valley needed a terminal degree, they needed a job. They worked here long enough to get enough on their resume mm. to move on to somewhere else. So new ideas of people with new ideas are good. But in my little opinion, and I don't know athletics like you all, but I know Valley, we need dedication. Yeah. We need somebody who loves the Valley. Mm -hmm. yes. We need someone who's not trying to build a reputation, mm -hmm. a name for themselves, themselves, add something to their resume, mm -hmm. so Valley is just a stepping stone mm -hmm. for them to go somewhere else. Right. Already got it. We mm -hmm. need somebody who's committed to building the Valley. Yes. And uh, as one speaker said, uh, uh, Congressman Thompson told us at a meeting um, before COVID, don't rest on our laurels that there's not some representative out there who will not one day enter a bill back into the legislature, legislature to either close or merge Valley with somebody else. Just because it's not on the table right now, we have got to be ever alert to that unknown senator or representative from Timbuktu who will put back on the table closing valley, emerging valley. So what we need is what like what we used to have here, the William Stewards and the Joe Curtis, the Robert Youngs and the uh, not here for a long time and the Carver Randalls. The people who are dedicated mm -hmm. to values and then blend in some new. But at the helm, we need dedication and love for the valley. Just with that being said. <laughs> Coach, how's it going? Doing good. I'm his other Jerry. Y'all Jerry. I'm his other Jerry. Okay. Uh, we work for extended advancement. Um, Coach, I'm, I, with all due respect, I do want to address that elephant in the room, which is Jerry. And if you would, if it would not get you in trouble, I would like to know what happened. What what happened to Jerry from your head coach's position all the way through to your return back to campus? I, I just think that the alumni constituency, the university, uh, he is the greatest to ever play the game. Uh, with all due respects to him, my stint as a member of the foundation board. Uh, my stint as uh, first vice president for the National Alumni Association, I'm just desperate to hear. And there are two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. Somebody muddied the water somewhere. Somebody got $500 from them and didn't do what they were supposed to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I think he got a little upset or salty mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Or did he ask for the stadium to be named after him? Mm -hmm. Was that a lure of some sort in his heyday and time? We don't know. And I think in all fairness, you may very well be the one to help us get an understanding of how we can bring the prodigal son truly back home. But what I have to understand is how is it us who, because a, a great poet, her name is Denise LaSalle, said love is a five-letter word, M-O-N-E-Y. So for all of us that love the valley and most certainly have it in our heart to love valley, we have got to be committed to giving money and resources back to the program. But I don't want to deviate from the question. If it is something that you know, and can, can since you and he have a relationship and a rapport, what happened? And then I have one other question. Let me, let me address that when you hold that question. <laughs> I, I think over the years, I think uh, some of that, yeah, I think you answered some of that the question yourself in terms of building relationships. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about a person who's worth anywhere from, it doesn't matter how much he's worth, right. it's about his relationship right. with the person who's asking. Right. And I think regardless of it being a Valley graduate, no, let's not even go as high as Jerry, but I'm going to address that question. Mm -hmm. Just a regular alumni, alum. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get alums now. Mm -hmm. Come on now. It's hard to get alums. So I think that question is a twofold question. I mean, to pull Jerry back to Valley, I mean, I can't, I can't make that call for Jerry. I can't okay. make that decision for him. I just understand when we talk, He's very concerned about Mississippi Valley. When he walk out the door, he's representing Mississippi Valley. But I think it's the, it's the, the ask. I really do. I think when, when you ask a person for money, if I don't know you, I'm not going to give you any money, regardless of what school you're from. Right. And I think that's where it starts. And I've never been the type that you carry for me. I can stand on my own. Come on now. All right. Come on now. I think a lot of people judge yeah. me because of what Jerry's doing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a lifetime member of the National Association. All right. yeah. all I right. pay my dues. Yeah. I, have a, I have a season ticket I buy every year. been doing that for over 30 years. All right. So to answer that question truthfully, I can't. Okay. But I understand that Jerry loved Mississippi Valley. All right. All right. All right. All right. And on the other side of that, you being in athletics for the years that you have, to return now as an assistant coach, quarterback coach, the, 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 the dynamics of athletics, whether it was failed leadership or the notions of Valley just being the underdog in every sense of the matter, coming into this position, what will you do differently from the seat that you're in as an athletic director that would most certainly, just from football alone, the dynamic of the um, certification of players being pulled off the bus at the last minute, uh, the, the facility, the, the stadium that bears you and Jerry's name. I, I struggle as an alum who loves this institution to know the shape that it's in, know the dynamics of it, to figure out what else can take place in order for us to understand that we as alumni have to fill the void. We have to fill the gap. We have to supplement that which is wrong with our university because administration is going to go and come. Mm -hmm. People are going to be here for a minute, as uh, as uh, the young lady stated. But we will forever be alumni. So, in that same vein, what will you do differently after this 27-year stint that you've had here? all of the various offices, will that culminate into something excellent for the university, or how will it manifest itself to bring a difference that we truly and desperately need because we're hemorrhaging whether it's being said publicly or not. Mm -hmm. We can be real about this. Come this is, now, this is inside. Now. This is internal. This mm -hmm. is us. This isn't for the media. This is us discussing mm -hmm. the shape of our institution and us as alums being passionate about doing what we've got to do in order to move the program forward. Again, We've worked closely together in advancement um, for some years as a consultant, as me being an alum, doing what I could do. I understand that dynamic, but what we're dealing with here has so many different layers and paradigms to it. My concern just 
just centers around the fact of what can we begin to do different? Because if you do the same things over and over again, expect a different result, you're insane. Okay. First thing to answer your question. I think the first thing that, that I would do at, as an athletic director, develop those relationships. I think first we have to start the relationship locally, state, and throughout the, throughout the nation. That dealing with our alum. I think the second thing that we have to do is understand the dynamics that we have here. Mm -hmm. and, and it goes back to relationships. I think the difference that you will see is, I don't want to be an athletic director that sit in the office. I want to be an athletic director that who's out in the community, mm -hmm. finding those dollars that's going to make the difference mm -hmm. in our program. Yeah. That's the difference you're going to see between my leadership, and I'm not knocking anybody else's leadership. I'm talking about everybody. Leadership is different. Right. Right. So I'm talking about right. the difference that the difference that I'm going to make, yeah. and I'm going to use my name. Mm. People know who I am. All right mm. now. The Come reason I'm time. saying that is, every time I meet a person from the community, they always tell me, Coach Titan, man, I was at that game when y'all played in '84. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you if now I have a conversation with you, mm -hmm. now I can develop a relationship okay. with you. Where now I, we need to sit down and talk about how can you help Mississippi Valley. Mm -hmm. It's getting in those doors, I think, that we haven't gotten in doors in the past. Okay. And that's what I'm going to bring to the table. All right. All right. All right. Good afternoon, Coach. How you doing? I have a question also, but mine related to community. It's about to what you just said. I'm a part of this community in the Delta. What would you do differently to attract, maintain the future students? Because the student body makes up the school. So goes the school, the students, so goes the school. And how much, what amenities, if any, could you attract? Because sports is just a lightning rod to get them here. There's another thing to keep them here. Right now, I'm fortunate to have a 30% graduation rate from any HBCU. And the Delta being the lowest economic status, what can you come up with or get the fan base? If we can win every game, what are you thinking of or can come up with to attract and get the community to dissolve? Invite the community to the, to the campus. A lot of times, people don't understand. Mm -hmm. If you don't ask me, I'm not going to do this. All right. That's right. But I think if, if, if in order for us to to get the community to relate to Mississippi Valley, we have to do things on the campus that are attractive. Yeah. I think what we can do is is, is our student advisory committee. I think that's a big part of student life because a lot of times those kids understand things that we don't understand. Be able to use that advisory committee to understand what the students want on the campus. And once they tell us what they want on the campus, now we know how to go out to the community. Say the nursing home. We have our football players, whatever app, sport, event, go out and support those people. Now we're, we're attracting the community. Now we want to do internships. Say we do an internship. We have a lot of businesses in Greenwood that we can get our kids involved in internships to attract those kids to come to the university. Now, I'm going to use that advisory committee to pull the other students and keep the other students happy. Okay, now once they get here, are the amenities going to be set up? Well, some of them coming from where to do fans. If you keep the demographics in the Delta, that's a different demographics. Now, that means that once they get here, are they going to get the love, support, the dorms, that's com com the whole nine yards, the love, so we can get them here and walk across the state. I know that's well, not an AD question, well, well, but well, think well, the impact of when we got alone, we get them here. I got to answer for it. I mean, I think that's where it goes back to all of us. I mean, we have alumni mentors, alumni shattering. Those, now if we get the alumni involved in what we're doing into our student activity and our student life, now, by you being a graduate there, Mr. Bird, you can come in and give a kid. You know a kid from your hometown that may be falling short. Yeah. Now, I don't have to be the one that yeah. says, yeah. 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 you can go and say, hey, look, I want you to come. Come on, John. I'm going to take care of you. That's not illegal to do that. You are <laughs> yeah. a that kid. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because it's more than athletics, and most of us in the room have to understand. We got to look towards the future. We got to get them here and keep them here. That's right. Yeah, that's what it is. That's that mission.
Hey, Coach. Hey, Mr. McFadden, how you doing, sir? Fine, how are you? Got um, several questions that were... You got a whole book line. <laughs> no, well, these were questions that were submitted by a loan from across the country. And I understand, I, man. I, 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 I said that I would share with them if I could. I understand. Okay. Um, uh, first, I want to just do a quote uh, I got from a, uh, some friends, and it's quoted Tony Robbins. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. So to lead into the questioning, what experience do you have in securing funding to make capital improvements to athletic facilities such as weight rooms, football fields, running tracks, or what can be done? Well, I tell you, I think that's, a, that's going to be more than just an athletic question. I think that's going to be an institutional question. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it, it's going to take all of us to do that, uh, that test. Mm -hmm. I think for as far as from the athletic department, I think fundraising is going to be real big. As you, you heard earlier, I want to be an athletic director who's going to be out there. I want... If, matter of fact, we have alums in the business that know how to do a field. We just got to know how to attract them and get them to do it. We have alums that know how to do grads. We just got to attract them to get them to do it, to do their part, to give back to the university. Mm -hmm. And from my experience of being here for so long and being in different departments, I can make that connection. Mm -hmm. I can make that bridge because people know who I am. Mm -hmm. If I call you, Mr. McPadden, and you can do alum service, I'm going to call and say, hey, Joe, I need your help. Now, you will help me, won't you? <laughs> I'm just going to ask you. You know, honestly, you know, we've all been in the trenches during right. Right. I'll help Valley in oh, any way that I right. can. Okay. So whoever's at the helm, right. that's, that's, where I, that's where I support. I, I, I understand. Yeah. I appreciate right. it. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question, though. Have you had any experience with athletic compliance issues while serving in the athletic department at the various institutions where you have worked, such as Valley, Grambling, or Alabama A&M? If so, what has been your role in resolving such compliance issues, and what plans do you have in preventing athletic compliance issues in the future? To answer your question, I never had a problem. Uh, we, we normally give a uh, recruiting test. At every school I've been at, I never failed the recruiting test on the rules and the regulations of, of, the, of the school. All right, all right. Uh, and to knowing compliance, as I stated earlier, I take, I take that serious. Mm -hmm. Working at other universities and being on the faculty here, I was on organizations, faculty organizations that deal with compliance. I was on uh, faculty meetings, organizations dealing with academics. So I understand the language of compliance. I understand doing it right, not one time, but doing it right all the time. All right. When I stated right. earlier, I had 32 football players to graduate. We were ranked first in the nation, oh, wow. in the conference, and we were ranked fourth in the nation. So I understand compliance, and I think what helps, though, educating yourself, going to compliance meet. We have so much information out there now that you can study up on, and understand compliance <laughs> to make sure everybody's doing things right. Mm -hmm. All right, That's come on now. All right, That's it. And last question, and I, be done. and I think I would have um, fulfilled my duty to uh, those who sent these questions in. Mm -hmm. What avenues will you pursue to ensure that all Valley's athletic programs receive the full allotment of scholarships allowed by the NCAA and also to um, be on a level playing field with other universities uh, in awarding full scholarships such as re refunds or field grants or what have you? Well, goes back again. You know, that's an institutional question as well, part. But I think what we have to do first, I think our revenue sports, which is football, men and women basketball, I think we got to fund those sports first. Those are our driving sports that are going to bring money to the university. Our non-athletic sports can build from the revenue sports. And I, 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 I would, that would be a proposal that I would present to the president to see how we can up those scholarships. Because I know it's a, it's a certain amount of money that comes from the, from the state. And we have to generate the rest of the money. 
That's why it's going to be very important that we do have an aggressive fundraising effort to up those scholarships. All right. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Ty. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you? All right. Um, before I get started, I want to ask you a tough question. But before uh, I ask you this question, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a role model for me in high school. Thank you for leading and guiding me in college. Thank you for helping me get that BS degree in biology with that mm -hmm. nine and ten mm -hmm. degree. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. right here. So you know me, I know you, but uh, I want to ask you this tough question. When you get this job, I want to make sure that every time you see me, I'm going to hold you accountable for this. Okay, so you know, you know, when I play ball here, uh, you know, it, it was almost at one point in time, every skill position was somebody from the Mississippi Delta, somebody from my hometown. And uh, so I want to know specifically what you're going to do to try to get recruiting to, to, to go back to the roots, to the grassroots from this community, because once you get somebody from this community, all the local schools, everybody from around here would fill up. Now you gave, you know, that question been asked to you two or three times in two or three different ways. And you said, what I can do, I know what I can do. I'm doing it, we're doing what we can do. Mr. John, uh, you know, he's doing what he can do. But what are you gonna do as an athletic director to try to get recruiting and try to get our kids? We have kids that qualify. You know, I've served here in Mississippi. I've been an educator for 30 years in Mississippi Delta. Uh, we have kids that qualify. We lose those kids, you know what I'm saying? You know, right down the street. So what is what do you propose to do? What do you propose to do to try to bring and make that uh, connection what it used to be? Okay, uh, <clears throat> first of all, if I'm the athletic director here, you know, I, I want to make sure that we understand when you're a coach, you have an obligation. And that obligation is to to the best you can do to develop and train student athletes. As an administrator, my, my position would be to talk to the coaches, to talk to the coaches about it. I don't want to be the one to make a coach recruit a kid mm -hmm. because that livelihood is in the coach's hand. Because the coach is going to be evaluated mm -hmm. based on his performance. Mm -hmm. So for me to be an athletic director, to micromanage that. That's right. I don't want to do that. That's right. But I want to be in a position where I can assist him. Yeah. If we have a kid that's in the Delta, that is a good football player, a basketball player, or uh, whatever sport they may play, I want to make sure that the coach feel comfortable in recruiting the kid. Mm -hmm. Can the coach develop that kid? Mm -hmm. And then we'll work out a plan to keep that kid. All right. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we have time for three more questions. So. Uh, Mr. Hall and Coach. May I, I mean, say something, know. please? Before you start with the course. And I know, uh, good afternoon, Coach Tom. I know everybody would ask them, what are you going to do differently? What are you going to do differently? And that's a good question. What I would like to ask Coach Tom, as an alum, I know Tom will check my record to see I'm active. What will you do to encourage me as alumni to start giving? Because at the surface of all of this, it's resources, money. As an alumni, I haven't given in 20 years, oh my. and I'm not probably going to start giving to you, and you got all these great ideas. As an alumni, what are you going to do to motivate the alumni? Because at the end of the day, we as an alumni, we have got to start taking care of our students. These athletes. They are our athletes. They are not the athletic directors. They are our. Parents are sending their children here to the university and trusting you all, us. And as alumni, we should be doing everything. We can help every entity. But as an alumni, I'm not giving. Now, this is hypothetical. Check the record. I know some of you will. Uh, I'm not giving. I'm not going to give. I'm mad or whatever. What can we do to regenerate our lungs to start giving back to our faithfully dear old MBSU? Uh, one thing I do know that uh, if I'm chosen to be the athletic director, being visible, 
building those relationships. Because one thing about it as an alum, anybody who gives you money, you can't make a person give. That's right. A person got to want to give because they love the reason why they give. That's right. But as an athletic director, having football coach, basketball coach, we want to get on the road. We want to go to you and tell you what the great things that we're doing at the university. That's why I said earlier, I don't want to be an athletic director that sit behind the desk. Mm -hmm. I want to have people who are going to handle the day-to-day. -day. That's right. But I want to be, when I can come and talk to you, Ms. Anderson, Dr. Anderson, mm -hmm. and tell you what we're doing at Valley. If you haven't been back at Valley in 20 years, hey, we need you back at the campus. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing. We're going to have an exciting football team. You may not be even interested in football, but being a part and giving your money is what we're looking for. And I think being visible. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to your presentation, and um, one thing that came to, well, there's several things that came to mind, but I'm going to limit my question to one. If Jerry Rice, over the last 30 years, have asked you not to mention his name with all of his donations, why all of a sudden now it's okay to mention my name got permission. of all of my donations? It seems like I'm trying to buy the position for you. By now, you're putting my name out. You're blasting my name, Jerry Rice. Let me that's ask, just I, my, I gotta that's just I my opinion. I got to ask that question before I forget. Because you say you had seven questions. First of all, Jerry and I, we talked. Right. When 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 I was the head football coach, he told me not to do it then. Right. That was seven, eight, that was 20 some years ago. Sure was. Okay, Come now, right now. Hey. in terms of what he's doing now, we talk on a, a, a an occasion that he wanna know what's going on in Mississippi Valley. Right. He wanna know. But I did that because my thing is I wanna clear his name. Because there's a lot of misperception out there that yeah. Jerry's not doing mm -hmm. it. I guarantee if I call Jerry right there and tell him I told him, he'll be okay with it. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking you. But I thought the forum was for you to present your credentials. It, that to is a part us. of his credentials. That's, that's, not, not that's a part of his experience. To justify or clarify anything for Jerry Rice. Now, if Rice wanted to clarify his things, then he should have been here and at that himself. Mm -hmm. That was not for you to do. Mm -hmm. This was for an interview for you him. presenting to us really? your qualifications to make us feel confident that you are the person that we need. You also mentioned some other things. Um, so which programs did you build and restore here at MVS? I thought I heard you say that you had built some programs and restored them. Okay, and how know. successful was that? Okay. When I talked about building and restore programs, not programs at Val. I ran the National Youth Sports Program. That program was in a disarray. We had change of leadership. I didn't know anything about it. NYSP being a director. But what I did, I went to those conferences and I learned the, 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 what to do and what not to do. Okay? Now, at the end of that year, we had the highest award, one of the highest awards, which is the Merit Award, for that year. And I did that for seven years. Okay? When I was the head football coach, when I took over as a head football coach, the team was 0 and 11. When I took that program over, the next year we went five and six. The fastest turnaround in the NC2W, NC2A. And building that program, we had back-to-back -back winning seasons in 21 years when I did that program. Now, when I went to Eastside High School, I was the athletic director and the head football coach. Mm -hmm. Same situation, same scenario. The team was not winning. When I got there, we turned that program completely around mm -hmm. and went to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by the building and the story. Mm -hmm. Not at Valley, but in my experience. Come on. Right. Yeah. Okay, another question. The stadium is named after you and Rice and Tonsley. 
at most universities, when buildings are named after people on campus, most times, there are certain various situations where it's different, but most times it's because of significant donations that those people have given to get their name on that building or whatever, and in this case, the stadium. So my question is, what significant funds did you donate towards the stadium to have your name, to have it named after you? Now, I didn't go in and lobby for my name to be on the stadium. All right. All right. The, the university right. made that decision to put my name on the stadium. had no, nothing to do with that. But I do give my, pay my dues, and I do contribute to the university. That's all right. You said you played a role in keeping the merger from happening when they were talking about closing the school. I'm just going by the things that you brought up. So I'm just wanting clarification so I better understand your qualification. So what role did you play? Winning. Winning. No, you said keeping the merger from closing the school. You winning a football game isn't going to... <laughs> oh, that brings revenue when you win it. Okay, let me give it a better term. When they talked about merging when I played, I didn't know anything about merging. I didn't know anything about closing. All I knew is to play football. Okay. I was a part of a revolution that stopped them from merging. Yeah. That's why I say I was a part of it. That's the only reason I said that. So, Thank you. what documentation, what verification do <laughs> you have me to say that is true? That what you said about playing by winning the football game caused them to stop the merger. That's what some things are saying. You would have to quote me some kind of documentation for me to believe that. Who are you? Uh, What's your I name? Do this here. Oh, I'm going to ask that question. If Dr. Hudson is in this room, I will ask Dr. Hudson. Dr. Hudson can verify that. All right, we have time for one more question. I think Mr. Hall was next. Coach, one thing we do have at Valley State this time is the most feared coach in the swag. That's, that's Coach Danson. Uh, when you put something in place, you're keeping him for a little longer. He said he won the swag championship. You think he needs that opportunity under your leadership? Well, I, I truly feel that the football team is going to be outstanding. All right. Uh, all right. I, I really feel that right. 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 I'm Coach Danson. Uh, coach Danson and his staff, and I'm part of that staff. We've done an outstanding job of recruiting the kids. Yay! So, we know last year, we're real close. We're real close to winning games. Yes. One or two uh, mistakes here and there. I think we could have been a lot more successful. But in order to keep Coach Dancy, I, I, I agree. Coach Dancy is going to be a hot commodity. All right. Coach Dancy was hot this year. So, I think what we have to do as alums, we have to come up with some money to keep it. That's it. That's it. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this will conclude Thank you, Thank you, our Thank you, question and answer session. Again, let's give Coach Todd a round of applause. Coach Taylor. Uh, I just want to quickly say, hey, talking about relationships, I'm here. I'm a Texas undergraduate. I coach at Jackson State, but I'm a Delta girl. And my sister Brenda Peterson graduated from uh, Mississippi Valley. And uh, and and I, I uh, congratulate you, and I, I wish you well on this opportunity. And if anything that I can help, you know, whether it's recruiting or fundraising um hey give me a call and I'm, I'm i'm willing to come and help you to continue to build this program because this is a part of my community too and uh and i and i wish you uh wish you luck thank you